Well, that's me finished on these Bedfordshire Champion onions. And if you watch my video, my last video, you'll see that I got, well, washed out. Every time I went to do something, it rained hard. Well, this heavy duty plastic tray, which is built to last, has worked really well. I've been able to push out all but just a couple of the onions and I pushed those out with a bit of cane and that worked out fine. So that's a full bed now of Bedfordshire Champion. And I'm gonna go on now and do the Globo onions, which are in a bed a bit further down the plot. This is an Enviro mesh net, which is supposed to keep the smaller insects out. I think it works quite successfully. Right, let's get that off and have a look what weed we've got. Well, there's not a great deal in here. What I can see is a couple of mare's tail, in fact, four or five, and then just a few weeds here and there. So I'll get those cleared up and then we'll just give the surface a bit of a rake and then we'll get planting on these global onions. I try and get down fairly low with these mare towel because if you can get the roots out, well, it doesn't get rid of them, but it certainly takes them longer to come back up. That's pretty much it on here. Right, quick rake, and then we're good to go. Well, no dig beds are a real pleasure to plant into. There's just been literally under a minute's worth of weeding, and I'm almost ready to plant. And this is just teasing the surface getting rid of any tiny weeds that might have decided they're going to get going. I can see another mare's tail there. There we are, ready. Let's get that one out. Where's he gone? There he is. So these deep rooted trays are absolutely fantastic. Pretty much everything came out of there real easy. So if you're looking for deep root trays, I recommend both those types. Really good. Right, turnip time. And I put them in here yesterday to protect them from the rain or the hellstone, should I say. And this is Turnip Milan White. So I'm gonna get this bed cleaned up. Again, there's only very few weeds in there. Just having a scout round. We got one there, nothing to it. And we've got a bit of grass growing in the edge here, which tends to happen. If I can get down low, I can get the root out. And there's a bit of ground cell. And that's about it, to be fair. Now these beds have been covered up a bit in the winter, but they've been open a fair while now. So I'll give them a rake, just like the other one, and we'll get underway. So getting down low, I can see we've got a couple of mare's tail in here as well. See if we can just get those out. You can hear the root pop, which unfortunately means there's root below. You don't really ever get rid of mare's tail, as I've learned. You just keep on top of it. Okay. Right, parsnips. No, not parsnips, turnips. 
Okay, so I planted these individually. They're really nice plants now. And last year, I planted them too close together. So once again, I'm gonna try my damnedest to be controlled about the spacing. And there we are, that's about eight inches. I think we're gonna get four across at a push. Probably eight inches is not good for four across here. So I might get a little bit closer as I get to the edge. I haven't got too many of these, but we didn't eat masses and I'd rather have fewer really nicely sized ones than lots of little ones. They really are healthy plants and I can see the turnip developing on the top already. There we are, about eight inches and then about 10 inches in the next row across. Okay, I'll finish these off. Well, things are going in real quick. When you've got a bit of decent weather and your plants are well on, things happen really fast. So I've often said, it's really important to enjoy the planting. Yesterday, I wasn't enjoying it. I felt like I was dodging the rain all the time. Today, completely different. It's an absolute pleasure. Well, I devoted the whole of this bed to turnips and I didn't sow that many plants. So I've got a bit of space. And you know how it is, all those spares that you end up with. I just decide what I put in there. Or I might sow a few extra parsnips. I've got to sow my swede yet, so I might do it together and then have some succession. Okay, I think I'll leave that net off for now, just in case there's something I want to put in there. And I think then I'm onto the broccoli, which came from the soil blocks. So let's go. Well, this is quite an interesting moment because of course, none of these soil blocks ever got put into plastic pots, which was the idea. And I've got broccoli 60 day, that's the quick heading variety. And I've got broccoli 120 day, the green heading variety. And let me show you the plants. So they're not enormous, but they're just fine. So to think that that's all happened without using a single plastic pot is quite rewarding. Let me show you the root system on these. So you can see it's quite well developed. And I think once they get into the soil now, they'll be perfect. So I think that's quite successful. And on balance, I would definitely use soil blocks again. There we go. Two, four, six, eight plants. And then we've got the green heading variety. Just move the sprouts along a bit. And they're just as good, just the same. And they come apart really simply. Got a little bit of stinging nettle in there because I used some soil in the mix that came from the garden. There we are, eight successful broccoli. Ah, spoke too soon. One is a blank, no problem. I'll just break that up and we'll get those planted. Well, they went in well. The eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that I remembered to put the lime into the holes before I planted those brassicas. And I'm gonna do exactly the same here with the kale. And these purple sprouting broccoli had that treatment and they flourish. They've really not suffered at all. And I know that I've got the dreaded club root in this bed. So it just goes to show how effective garden lime can be at keeping the club root under control. So I'm gonna take these two plants out and then get some Cavallo Nero style cow in here. 
It's called Toscana, it's one of my favorites. And last year I had it in a bed over on the far side and it really needed a bit more full sun. So it's going in here this time. So I'm gonna take these irons out, which have been fantastic at holding up these purple sprouting broccoli. And I'm gonna use those for the sprouts that are going over here. And we'll just dig these out and the chickens are gonna have these because I've got a fair amount of crop left and it's gonna do us to have what's over there. And I've got a couple of weeds in here, including some docks. So I'm always pleased to get those out when they're young because they, once they get established, the roots are really vigorous. Right, let's have this one out. There's definitely a feast coming for the chickens. So these Cavalonero style kale are looking absolutely fantastic. Slightly bigger modules that I put them into paid dividends. And these plants get quite big when they get mature, getting on into the winter months. They can you know, take a fair old space, if they're healthy that is. So I'm gonna plant these out fairly carefully and get a bit of space between them. struggle with Brussels sprouts. I've never had fantastic success, but I keep trying. I'm gonna put them in with a great deal of space around them this year. Now, Brussels sprouts I understand like firm soil. This isn't that firm, but I'm gonna push it down as hard as I can. So, soil blocks once again, and I've got one weed in there, which we'll take out. But other than that, I've got a really nice, well-rooted plant. So I'm just gonna position them. I think we'll have three across, that's all. And we're only gonna have about six plants in here. And then I'm gonna plant some cauliflower in front of them. So all these plants are pretty slow growing really. So the bed can be planted up and left untouched. So that'll be what we've got, six, 12 plants in all. So we can get them nicely spaced and then we'll get them in. Well, that's been a super productive day. We've got plenty in the ground. I really feel like we're getting the season underway now. So different from yesterday. It's been a pleasure. It's not been too warm and no rain and definitely no hailstones. So I'll show you what we've got in and I'll leave you with one other thing before I end the video today. Well, that's collie all year round. We've got six of those and Brussels sprouts, seven hills, six of those. And they're gonna pretty much sit there and just grow on throughout the season and hopefully we'll see the fruits of our labors well down the road. And we've got in two, four, six, eight, ten kale plants, Cavalonero style, and they've been put in, as of the Brussels sprouts and collies, with some of the garden lime, just to keep on top of that club root. And we've got a space here, and our turnips, give them a bit of a watering in at the moment. A whole bed full of globo onions and they're all cracking on now as are the Bedfordshire champion which are looking good and yesterday of course I also did these which is some spring onions and two lots of cabbage the filderkraut and the greyhound so the last thing I wanted to show you was these rhubarb I've never known rhubarb get so many flowers and I'm going to take those off now but that must be the tenth set of flowers that I've had on rhubarb this year. It's just an unusual season, I guess. And I can't see any more on those. But the rhubarb plants are just enormous now. So we're going to be harvesting our first crop from those pretty shortly.
I do hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, click the subscribe button, click the like button, and if you want updates from me each time I upload a video, click the bell and select all. I do hope you have a great day. Diochenbach.